Okay, here's uh, another electron pushing arrow. Uh, please pause the video and see if you can draw what's the product that is suggested by this arrow. So far I've just redrawn the original picture. Now let's make some modifications. Well, the, uh, where are the electrons coming from here? The tail of this arrow is on this lone pair. Um, so again, the electrons are coming from the lone pair. So I'm going to uh, erase the lone pair. And where are the electrons going to? Well, now the head of this arrow is pointing to this bond. The head of the arrow is pointing to the bond. I, I think that's pretty natural and intuitive to interpret. It is, I think it's pretty natural that now we're going to form a new bond. I think it's pretty natural that when the head of the arrow is pointing to a bond, that indicates that you're forming another bond in that location. Uh, so here would be the correct product. Again, I'll remind you that even though the charges are very important, we're not going to be covering the charges right now. We'll talk about charges later. So right now, I'm not going to worry about how the charges are going to change. Okay, um, so uh, this, you can see, it turned out to be a different type of transition from our previous examples. Our previous examples were lone pairs that were forming sigma bonds. Well, what are we doing now? Well, we still started with a lone pair, uh, but now we formed a pi bond, right? Again, uh, hopefully most of you are far enough along in chemistry, uh, in organic chemistry, or actually you might remember this from uh, general chemistry, um, to know that if you form a double bond or a triple bond, the, the second and the third bonds are pi bonds. So again, a single bond is a sigma bond, um, but when you formed a, a second bond or a third one, that's called a pi bond. So here we were taking the lone pair and forming a, a pi bond, a, a second bond in this region. So this is a, a new type of transition that we hadn't talked about yet. Let's make sure that this is really uh, legal here um, by talking about lacking, sharing, and owning. So the X here owned the pair of electrons. And here the X is sharing the electrons. Ah, so that reminds me, something I'm going to do here is let's actually draw the electrons in this pi bond. So here's the electrons in that pi bond. Now, again, normally people don't actually draw the pair of electrons in a bond, but actually I think that would be a really good habit for us in these videos um, so that we can actually see that the electron pushing arrows really do show us where the electrons are coming from and where the electrons are going to. So if we follow this pair of electrons in this picture, the X was owning them as a lone pair, but in this picture, the X is sharing them as a pi bond. How about the Y? Well, um, what's the relationship between the Y and this pair of electrons over here? Well, the Y lacks those electrons. Again, I'm, I'm sure the Y has other electrons, but it lacks these electrons, it lacks this pair that we're focusing on. But in this picture, now you can see that uh, the Y is sharing these two dots. The Y is sharing these two electrons in this covalent pi bond. All right, and is this a legal transition? Well, yes, we've gone, the X has gone from owning to sharing. That's a one step. And the X has gone from lacking to sharing. That's also permissible. The only thing that wouldn't be permissible is to go from lacking to owning or owning to lacking. Again, I have this X here to show you can't do that. So this is per perfectly permissible. We're allowed to do this. Pause the video and try to draw the product here. Uh, I started by just uh, redrawing the original starting materials, and now we can make some modifications. Now, where are the electrons coming from here? Well. The tail here is on this negative charge. What does it mean when the tail of the arrow is on the negative charge? Well, we already discussed that. It means the electrons are really coming from a lone pair. Remember that we're really using the negative charge kind of like a stand-in for the lone pair. Um, now, again, usually in organic chemistry, we would not draw the lone pair in this situation, but I am going to draw it to make it clearer what's happening here. Um, so in this picture, I'm going to go ahead and erase that lone pair because the uh, X is not going to have the lone pair anymore. That's where the electrons are coming from. 
And uh, I think it's pretty obvious the X wouldn't have the negative charge anymore either. So even though I'm not really focusing on charges here, uh, I will get rid of that negative charge. And where are the electrons going to? Well, the head of this arrow is pointing to the bond. And we already know that means that we're making this new pi bond. And I'll put in the dots to show that the electrons that used to be in this lone pair have moved into uh, this pi bond over here. All right, so really this is just another example of what we just saw. It's just another lone pair to pi bond transition. The only difference is um, that uh, on a neutral atom, you have to draw in the lone pair to show where the electrons are coming from. Whereas if the atom already has a negative charge, you can just put the tail of the arrow on the negative charge. And we got a pretty similar product here. Uh, and again, uh, in, in real life, we would have to change the charge on this Y as well. But I'm not going to talk about that yet. Let's just focus on getting the bonds right and the lone pairs. Draw the product here. That's another trick question. Um, you can't draw anything here because this is a meaningless arrow. Um, why is this meaningless? Because the tail of the arrow is pointing directly at the atom. And, and we never do that in organic chemistry. We discussed that earlier. The tail of the arrow should never be pointing directly at an atom. Now, probably what the person meant to mean here is they meant to mean that the electrons are coming from a lone pair. Well, then if the X is neutral, they should have drawn in the lone pair. Um, it, if you're trying to donate electrons from a lone pair on a neutral atom, you have to actually draw in that lone pair. That's the conventional way to do it. On the other hand, if the X has a negative charge, um, you can just put the tail of the arrow on the negative charge. Uh, but the one thing you can't do is just put the tail of the arrow directly on the atom. So uh, this is something that doesn't uh, mean anything. It's not something you would actually draw in OCHEM. Okay.